Hello and welcome to another edition of the Nerd Enterprises Incorporated webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. My name is Seth David. I'll be your host for the next 10 minutes or so. Today's webcast, I am committed to bringing you an introduction to pivot tables. We're going to do a few of these and of course I'm going to have a full length tutorial on pivot tables up in our learning center soon enough. So stay tuned, check back, let me know what you'd like to see, let me know what you wouldn't like to see, and just generally join with us because there's a lot going on at Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. We've got a lot going on. We're really important here. Anyway, visit us on the web. We've got our QuickBooks blog, we've got our main blog, and of course we've got our main website. Main website, www.nerdenterprises.com. You'll see our learning center there. You'll see links to our QuickBooks and Excel blog. You'll see the link to our online conference center, which is how you get here. So visit us on the web. we got a lot going on, and we're really important. Just remember that and tell your friends about us. It's really important that you tell everyone you can about Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. We've got a fan page on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Pretty much any of these websites, YouTube, you're possibly watching this on YouTube. Just go to that site, forward slash Nerd Enterprises. You're very likely to find me. Very likely. With that in mind, I want to take you over to a special place, our sharing screen, which is where we're going to share and care and show you the love and give you free information on how to get an introduction to pivot tables, how to get started working with pivot tables, Pivoting. So what is a pivot table? It's a good question to start with. The word pivot is frequently used in the sport of basketball because you can't walk. You can't travel with the ball. So what happens is once you stop dribbling, not drooling, but dribbling, you put your foot down and you pivot around. And you move around on one foot. As long as that one foot doesn't leave the ground, you're okay. Well, the same thing applies in Microsoft Excel. You're going to put your foot down, so to speak, on one piece of data, and you're going to pivot around that data, and you can describe it in lots of different ways very quickly. A lot of the stuff we do in pivot tables can also be accomplished, and you may already know how to do it using data filters, sorting, and subtotaling, but the fact of the matter is pivot tables accomplish these things much quicker, much more easily, once you understand how to use them. So that's the key. The key, of course, is understanding how to use them. And like many things, I think people have the impression that these pivot tables are so complicated that they, they're afraid to even try them. Well, I'm going to show you how easy it is. We're in Microsoft Excel 2007. I've just clicked this over onto the Insert tab. We're looking at a set of data that I created by doing an export from a sample QuickBooks file. And I just summarized sales by item and put it into a table so that we could easily convert this into a pivot table and that's what we're going to do. Very quickly, remember this is just the intro. If you want a more full-length version, I'll give you my email address at the end of this webcast so you can get in touch with me and I can even schedule a private one-on-one -on -one session. Of course, that I do have to charge you for. But we're on our insert tab, we choose pivot table. It recognizes, Excel recognizes that I've got a range here. You may just want to scroll up and down very quickly to make sure that the entire range is included. And once you're satisfied about that, click OK. It's OK. Excel brings us, it opens up a new sheet and just gives it a generic sheet name. And we've got all of our fields. These are all the columns that were in that table. So now we have to decide how we want to view this information. So the first thing we're going to do is let's assume that we want to look at total sales dollars. What I want to do then is I want to bring the amount down here into the values box. I go into the values box and then I want to describe this amount in terms of a format. So I went a little quickly there. Let me back up. Over here in the values box, I click on the arrow. I can click anywhere on the button actually. And the last choice at the bottom is value field settings. And that's what I want to focus your attention on. Click that. Choose number format. And now it's just like formatting any cell in Excel. So I go to number, and let's say I want negative to be shown in red in brackets. I click OK. I click OK again. And we're good. Now I've got my number formatted properly, but this doesn't really tell me a whole lot. 
So now I want to start describing more information. Well, maybe we want to focus on what's going to go in our rows. The first thing I probably want to look at is different inventory types. So I've got inventory, I've got other charges, parts, and service. And let's look at my options here very quickly because what I want to be able to do is I want to actually go to the layout and print. This is actually slightly more advanced, but I want to, I want to display the tabs from the next field in the, I, I want to not do it in the same column. Let's put it that way. So I click OK. And now I can bring in the next piece of information I want to look at, which is going to be the product name. And I drag it below the inventory type in the row labels, which means it's going to be placed immediately to the right in my actual pivot table. And see, now we're getting somewhere. Because now what I've got, you know what I forgot to do on the number format, is I want the comma in there. But now what I've got is some valuable information summarized. What are my cabinet sales? What are my hardware sales? What are my wood door sales? And so on. Here are my service items. You see how nice that is? It's very easy. And it took me two seconds, basically, to do this by just dragging the information in. Let's say I want to look at column labels. Let's say I want to look at things by date. I can do is I can drag the date down here into the column labels. Now I can see sales by date. So this is just for one month. And then once that's in place, what I can do is I can click here. Notice there's an arrow next to the column labels. This works just like a filter when you're filtering on a data table. I can drop this down and say, well, now I just want to look at sales for one day. I want to look at sales on December 12th. And we're into the future here, folks, because this is a sample company file, and QuickBooks does that. It puts your dates into the future as a way of being sure that you know you're in sample data and not working with real data. I can drop this down again and choose Select All, and everything comes back into play. So now you're starting to see how quickly this information can become very valuable. And what I encourage you to do is play around with this stuff. Go get a table of data somewhere. I don't care where you get it from. And go play with it. Just go insert a pivot table and see what are my options. Play with it. What does this do? What does that do? If you're using play data, so to speak, then it's not going to matter if you ruin it. You can, you know, save a copy of it so you can get it back to where it was and play with it again. But that's how I've learned half this stuff is just by playing around with it and seeing what are my options. It's basically two principles. What does this do and how do I do it? That's what you want to ask yourself as you see each option. I can go through here and look. I have a tab called options. Well, what does this do? Refresh. Well, let's think about that for a minute. What would refresh do if I go into my sales by item and let's say I change a piece of information or add something to it? What happens is then I go back here, nothing will change here until I click refresh. And then it'll refresh the table. So if I that's what the refresh button is all about. If I change my source data, then I go back to my pivot table and I click refresh in order to make sure that that change is reflected. Now let's say I say, okay, I want to get back to just looking at sales by product uh, description. All I have to do is come over here and uncheck the date. And here I am. And by the way, I can click in here. And I can freeze the panes, just like I do with any other spreadsheet, so that I can see my row headings. And that's your basic introduction to pivot tables. If you click away from the table range, those options go away. Just click on it again, and it reappears. Very simple. It's also in your options over here to show and reveal the field list. And that's it, folks. I'm out of time. I've got to keep it under 10 minutes because it's free and because I want to make sure I can get this on YouTube. So visit us on the web, like I said, at www.nerdenterprises.com. My email is seth at nerdenterprises.com. Send me an email. Give me your feedback. Tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me what you wouldn't like to see. And have a great week.